Welcome back my dear students. In this class, let us learn another 5 marks important question in this chapter that is the structure of megasporangium. It is also known as ovule. The type of the ovule, what I am showing here is the anatropous ovule. So this is what? Anatropous ovule. They may also ask like this. Explain the structure of anatropous ovule. What do you mean by anatropous ovule? Let me explain. Anatropous ovule means it's a kind of a ovule in which See, this region is known as funical region. This funical region is bent back on itself. You can see here, the shape is like this. Right? So, the funical region is bent back on itself and this region is known as micropyle region. This micropyle is facing the placenta. Here, there will be placenta. This micropyle region is Facing to what? Placenta. This kind of ovule is known as anatrophous ovule. Okay? See, anatrophous ovule means the ovule in which the punical region bent back on itself and the micropyle facing the placenta. Okay? And this ovule may be having one layer or two layer. If it is having one layer, we call it as unitegmic. Uni means what? One. So, tegma means layer. One layer means it is unitegmic. Or it may be Bitegmic. Bi means two. Tegma means again layer. And this anatrophous ovule consists of three important parts. The first part is known as nothing else. You have already studied embryo sac. It represents what? The female gametophyte. Okay. And the second part is integuments. And the third part is mucilus. Not nucleus. It's mucilus. Okay. See, this is embryo sac. Okay, and there are two integuments here. One is outer and another is inner. And this is a mucilous part. Then, after the fertilization, after the fertilization, this ovule develops into what? Seed. After the fertilization, the ovule develops into seed. And seed. Now, let me talk about the ovule in detail. So, the first part is the funicle. Okay, the first part is called funicle. See, the ovule is attached to the placenta. Here comes the placenta. Okay, so the, this is called placenta and the ovule gets attached to the placenta by a structure or a stalk known as funicle. So funicle is a stalk through which ovule is attached to placenta. Right? So, next, another hilum. Hilum means, see, the body of the ovule which fuses with the funicle. Okay? The body of the ovule which fuses with the funicle is called hilum. Hilum means what? The body of the ovule 
which fuses with funicle is known as what hilum next it has two envelopes called outer integument and inner integument so the envelopes that means which encircle the ovule envelopes called the outer and inner integuments and see here the integuments are encircling the ovule except at the tip see here except at the tip so this region it is a tip of the ovule and here there will be a small opening and that is called micropyle so micropyle means so it is a tip of the ovule where the integuments are not present and here there will be a small opening right and opposite to the micropyle end so this is known as what chalazil pore opposite to the micropyle end so this pore is known as chalazil pore chalaza means what it is a basal part chalaza represents what the basal part okay and there is one more tissue here mucilus see this mucilus it's a nourishing tissue it's a nourishing tissue that means it has reserve food material so that it nourishes the developing embryo sac so mucilus is what here nourishing tissue and it nourishes the developing embryo sac okay and the embryo sac or the female gametophyte where it is located means in the new mucilus region okay the embryo sac is located in the mucilus region so this is the structure of anatropous ovule so they will ask you for five marks for five marks you have to start from here and you have to end till here right hope you have understood see the ovule has a single embryo sac you can see here it has a single embryo sac and how it is formed that is by reduction division and that process is known as megasporogenesis megasporogenesis so in the previous classes i have explained about the microsporogenesis in the same way this is megasporogenesis see the megasporogenesis means the process of formation of megaspores because name itself indicating megasporogenesis so here the process of formation of megaspores from from the megaspore mother cells from megaspore mother cells and how it is formed by reduction division by reduction division or meiotic division also you can write so this process is known as what megasporogenesis and this megasporogenesis takes place in ovule it takes place in where ovule see how megasporogenesis takes place means you can just see here see this is ovule 
this ovule differentiate to form single megaspore mother cell we call it as mmc mmc means megaspore mother cell so where it is formed means in the micropyla region so where it is formed means in the micropyla region the ovule differentiates a single megaspore mother cell and it is in the micropylar region of the nucleus okay and this megaspore mother cell they undergoes meiotic division you can also write this as reductional division and that results in the formation of four mega spores that results in the formation of what four mega spores see 1 2 3 4 okay but out of four the three will become degenerate that means it will get vanished only one will develops into the embryo sac hence there will be a single embryo sac in each ovule right see the megaspore mother cell undergoes meiotic division and it forms four megaspore where in the micropyla region of the nucleus and after the formation of four megaspore three will degenerate and one will become developed and this process is known as monosporic development see they will ask this for one mark what is monosporic development the process of development of only one megaspore from the megaspore mother cell by reductional division is known as monosporic development so this is about megasporogenesis hope you have understood thank you for listening